No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Black Magic Design, amazing solutions for film, post-production, and television. Big Stock, videos and images for everyone. Color Grading Central, professional color grading with Color Finale. Shutterstock, where ideas take shape. I'm here with Patrick at Adobe and he's going to tell us about uh, a lot of the things that's coming up with Creative Cloud. We really reimagined the way editors are going to work with Color Moving Forward and Premiere Pro. So instead of giving you one more tool and one more option and one more thing in general, some plays a little thing better, everything has really been reimagined. So it's now a color workspace that you can click on. So it's very similar to Lightroom where you can actually switch task-oriented workspaces. You now have a color workspace there. And it starts with the new Lumetri scopes. These are the speed grade scopes, but even better, very much real time now. Uh, you've got to the right, the part that I'm most excited about in the application, you've got the creative tools, but all in one space. And best of all, if you see how that relates to your media on the timeline, you don't need to activate anything. It's now an intrinsic effect, much like you have the audio intrinsic and the resizing options intrinsic. That's the same deal now. So you don't need to find something in the effects and then put it on and reconsider whether the freeware was the best idea, might have wanted something else. So all of that is gone. And additionally, it's really a lot of tools that kind of blend speed and Lightroom technology. So from the user interface, you'll probably smile about it if you ever use Lightroom because it's kind of, okay, I don't need to know how this works because I already do. <laughs> Two exciting things in Premiere Pro for sure. We have morph cut, so if you do interview footage like we're doing now, and I have a lot of ah, uh, ooh, uh, ooh uh, in it that you want to cut out. So the thing is, once you have that and we're on a single camera, there's no B-roll, or the piece is too short to have any B-roll in the first place, then what are you going to do if you need to cut that out and then there's a little bit of a jump there? And that's what morph cut is about. So you actually have a new way of transitioning. So it's not a regular dissolve. It's actually frame by frame analysis looking at each and every pixel is actually merging and blending then at the position where you set it to morph one into the other so it becomes really unnoticeable. And that's exciting because it's going to save you so much time. There's nothing else that you need but really that one thing that you put on. You don't even need to know how it works because it just does. The other thing is time tuner, just to quickly sneak another thing in, <laughs> which I think is exciting because more often than not, you have a specific time slot and then someone's going to change that for you for the program you produce. So it's no longer five minutes, it's actually four minutes, 56. You might go back and do some micro editing, but if you have even multiple outputs and they need to vary a little, we have now an option, media encoder called Time Tuner, where you can clearly set, this is the exact duration I need, and then minus 10, plus 10% is where it's gonna work. I would recommend going more for the sweet spot, that's probably anywhere between two and five, but check it out. Also, obviously, every footage responds different to a technology. But the cool thing is, you don't need to know how it works again, because it's gonna produce artifact-free, very pristine output, and it's not gonna speed up in this way, it's, it's gonna be very natural. Oh, that's awesome. I, 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 is this, are those available now so we could make my interviews even better than they are right now? If you are a pre-release user, absolutely. Feel free to use the software as it stands, as we're previewing here today. So it's a reveal. We're doing it at NEB. We say it's coming soon, so I have no date for you yet. But stay tuned. Uh, we'll definitely have more information coming soon. Just for uh, our users out there that might be interested in animation, I know you have a, a new tool for that. Could you briefly uh, touch on that? Yeah, I think that's probably the most fun what we're showing around here. It's called Character Animator. And that's basically, if you want to look at it this way, a sister product to After Effects that's very task-oriented all by itself. What it's going to do for you is it allows you to bring Photoshop and Illustrator files into that product. And Character Animator allows you to do rigging to these Illustrated Photoshop files. So if you have a really neat character and you have facial expressions already created, like you know, eyes open, eyes closed, I did it the wrong way. I'm not sure if there's going to be a product that's going to allow to reverse that in the future. But the thing is, Character Animator brings life. It breathes life into these creations. And it's doing that by watching you. So there's a camera that's facing you. Could be just the one that's built in with your laptop, for example, or um, just something you stick to your computer and it's also recording you, so your voice is going to produce the lip sync, but if you blink with an eye, that's going to be tracking you and bring that to the character as you record it. And you can do that in a multi-track fashion, so you can do it for multiple characters and then create final output eventually. So it could be very complex scenes, various characters. It can even be animated in such a way that a keyboard shortcut is going to make the character wave his hand or give you a V. 
You can make them dance all sorts of amazing things without you knowing a lot about keyframing or putting these things together. There's a lot of After Effects tech underneath the hood taking care of that. Oh, well, thank you very much, Patrick. Pleasure, thank you. Thank you.